Hey everyone, welcome to Sonic Station, and today, today I'm going to make a video about something that I really wanted to make for a really long time, and to be honest, I end up postponing it until today for some specific reasons. I think these kinds of videos are meant to be more of a reflection from your side, and at the same time for us to learn more about things. I want to make it a non-scripted video, because I think sometimes it's better to approach these topics like that. I think we live in a peculiar time, where everyone has their opinions, everyone thinks that they should express their opinions as quick as possible, and sometimes we end up misjudging a product, or we end up not seeing exactly what we are going to get. And I think that can be applied with Sonic Origins. Sonic Origins has been the debate of many things. It was called a weird collection of classic Sonic games, a collection that was way too expensive to be bought. And I think that is kind of false. I will be honest, I think Sonic Origins is actually a really interesting collection. It is different from everything we had. And I think many people decided to follow the general idea for, for just, what, 30 seconds of footage and decided to call this a cash grab, that this is not going to have any new features and all those things. But the truth is, things are not like that. Sonic Origins has a ton of new, innovative things that many people decided to just not look at them right from the first opinion of some. And today we can see that I am kind of defending Sonic Origins, because everyone was quick enough to point the finger into Sonic Origins and calling it bad and calling it other things. But no one was brave enough, at least from what I know, to defend this collection. I've been defending Sonic Origins probably since day one, not defending that it was a really good collection, that he didn't have any flaws, but in a way that we needed to judge it accordingly to what we were going to get. So now that we have more information, let's talk about it. So it seems that Sonic Origins is a collection of four remastered classic titles, but it's just not that. We have Sonic 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 2, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles to play in widescreen, with tons of other features, new abilities, all those things that many fans of other franchises could only dream of. And sometimes we are not really valuing that. More importantly, I think that Sonic Origins is, like Sonic Mania, a love letter from fans to fans. We have a ton of references, we have the tons of things, and honestly, if this collection doesn't have more things, I think it was because it was impossible. It's just my personal opinion. We have the four main best titles of Sonic the Hedgehog in here, the ones that really made the franchise. They are remastered with the utmost quality. We still have the option to play the classic versions of these games. We have a collection mode with tons of new artwork, some never before seen things. We have eight animated cutscenes for a full brand new story mode that attempts to connect everything into a super cool mode that has like top notch quality in their cutscenes. And we even have a brand new opening with a brand new ending. I think those are really important things. We have new playable characters in these old games. We have a boss rush mode, a mirror mode. What more could we really ask for? We even have the competition mode from Sonic to the Christian Whitehead port where it has even more stages. And we have the Sonic 3 and Knuckles competition mode being brought back. Basically everything is here, even Blue Spheres is here. And I think many people decided to misjudge this collection, saying that it was a way to make profit, but I think not. Let's wait a bit and look at Sonic Origins. Listen to the music that Sonic Origins has to offer. Look at the menus, look at the details, look at the references. This is really a care package for Sonic fans. We have everything that we could ask for. 
This collection is not just for remastered titles. It has all kinds of improvements that many are not valuing. We have a coin system that is replacing the live system. Okay, I understand that some may not be a fan of that. But what's the issue with that? It's just going to bring more availability for those that cannot clear the game. And it even brings you ways to retry the special stages, which is great, at least in my opinion. We have new characters, we have tons of things, we have references. If you are not a person of these kinds of collections, I understand, but this is a collection, this is a celebration of Sonic. And to me, the best celebration that classic Sonic could have, along with Sonic Mania, it ends up connecting all five games in a really nice way. And I think that we should really value that. It even has the Sonic Mania Adventures episodes in the collection. What more could you ask for? I mean, there are some issues with this collection. I'm not saying it is perfect. There are, as far as I know, no commercials, which was a thing that I really wanted. But at the same time, if they aren't there, it's because there are some legal issues with it. I'm certain of that. In fact, Sonic 3 and Knuckles OST is a proof of that, because we are not going to get the Michael Jackson sound team music in the game. We need to have them replaced. But is it that bad? Actually, I think it shows even more care from the developers, because think about it and look at it in a really interesting way. We are grabbing the prototype musics, but they aren't just going to deliver it to you. They are going to remix it, to make an FM makeover of them to fit in with Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And that shows care. At least for me, that really shows care. They are going to have OSTs from other classic Sonic games for you to listen. They have islands that reference other classic Sonic games that are not here. And I could be here speaking for an hour how this collection should be more valued. But at the end of the day, it is your opinion. But before I leave, I would like to say this. The game has a mission mode. I did not hear anyone speaking about this mission mode, but I think this is going to be the main core for the collection, at least for new players, we can say, that, uh, that don't care about the collection part of the collection, which is kind of ironic, of course. But this is going to be the main challenge. You are going to have brand new challenges, brand new set of things where you can improve, you can learn more about classic Sonic, and you have brand new stages in it. No one is valuing this, but this is really valuable. Now, if we think about the price tag, I know that this video is being a bit long, but I think Sega deserves a video like this, and it deserves people to defend Sonic Origins when it was unfairly pointed out as being a bad game. And for me, it is not a bad game. I think we need to take this time to think about the price tag. $40, is it expensive? It is. I'm not going to say it is not. But is it the price that the collection deserves? Maybe. We need to consider two things that are really important before assuming a price to something. One, we are living some complicated times nowadays. We came out from a pandemic situation, we have war in some places in the world, and all those impact things. But secondly, there is one thing called inflation. Things tend to be more expensive with time. It's something that has been happening for since forever, I think, and at least since I was born. Things tend to become more expensive with time, and if we try to compare the prices of, let's say, Sonic Mania, or even the other collections, the Mega Collection Plus and Sonic Gems Collection, we can see that, well, times are changing. Things are becoming more expensive. I remember being a child, more or less, maybe the age that most of my audience has, and remembering new games coming out at $40, but now they come out at $60, sometimes even more, $70, $80. And we need to kind of evaluate that. A non-AAA game 
is coming out at $40, and I think that's what Sonic Origins is. If it is art or not to buy it, I understand that there might be some concerns with some gamers, and it is what we have to live with. I think the price is right. If you have some difficulties buying a game, I actually want to also make a mention to something. You don't have to buy every single game day one. There has been like this idea that you have to buy every game day one, and I actually never bought a game day one. And um, I think that's false. Games are not like your must have in life. Food is different, it is something essential for you to live, but games are not, and we need to remember that when they are not as accessible as we wanted them to be. But at the same time, we need to judge them accordingly and with concepts that maybe are not easy for many to kinda assimilate, and I think that this is why Sonic Origins is in a good price range. Now, if I agree with having DLC, absolutely not. I think it is not the concept of a collection to have DLC packs. I, I think that's something uh, that shouldn't be there. The full package should be 40 and you should buy everything. But that's at least my opinion. And I think that has no defense, actually. Sega has been releasing some really weird DLC deals, especially with Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, I remember that. And I think this is one of those examples and that there shouldn't be any kinds of DLC. That that has no defense, at least in my in my point of view. So so sorry for everyone that was expecting for me to only say good things about this collection. No, there there is this bad thing. Now, speaking of Amy and Metal Sonic, I decided to leave this topic to last because everyone wants these characters to be playable and I think we need to manage expectations. It's just like everyone expecting Sonic's Pinball and 3D Blast and other games to be ROMs and lockable in this collection. They were never promoted as being playable characters, playable games. They, they were not promoted, so you should not make um, what we say unrealistic expectations. I think that we need to be realistic about what we are approaching. And they are not the intention of this collection. Amy was never playable in a classic Sonic game. Metal Sonic was never playable in a classic Sonic game. So we don't even have movesets for these characters. In terms of a collection, why expect them to be here playable? It's not what we expect. If you look at other collections, we never get something outstandingly brand new in these games. We get something gold ported to old games. So we have Tails and Knuckles in Sonic 1. So that, that's expected, but having brand new characters that were never there, I think it is something about managing expectations that is going wrongly about it, and that's why I think you should never expect them to be playable. Now, would I want it? Absolutely. I would want Sonic Origins to become like, let's say, Sonic Origins Plus, and have a DLC that would bring them, like in the future, with a physical release, and a book with all the artwork that is in the collection. I would love that, but we don't have that. Uh, and if that happens, I think it would be really cool and would be really good for Sega, but if it doesn't happen, it is what it is and we need to accept it. Now, there are two more topics that I want to approach. The listing of games and, finally, fan versions of, of these games. The listing of games, I think it's kind of easy. These games were delisted, at least the old versions of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and & Knuckles, and Sonic CD. And Three and Knuckles, I understand that might be some, we can say, legal issues with it. However, we don't know the full story about these games. And I actually think Sega has been quite respectful, at least in those terms. They haven't made, like, big changes to their games, and they try to keep them available. They still have Sonic 1 and 2 available on the Switch. They still have the Sega Forever ports of the classic games available to be downloaded. So there might be some legal issue there, that unfortunately we will never know. 
it is some of those things that even if if we ask we will never get a definitive answer just like we don't have a definitive answer to the michael jackson sound team issue it's some of those things that will remain unknown for time at least for an, an undetermined period of time now about fan versions we already know sonic the hedgehog 1 decomp and sonic the hedgehog 2 decomp are available sonic 3 air are available sonic cd is available has a decomp 2 and we have sonic cd restored sonic 1 forever sonic 2 absolute we have tons of versions of these games that were already remastered and they were made by fans there is one thing that i want to say we should be thankful to sega because they never took any legal action to this projects and i think it is really important to say thank you when we really need it and they have allowed many fans to contribute with their projects in fact sonic origins is an example of that it has projects that were worked by christian whitehead and simon tomley two fans that started working on other fan projects before related to the blue blur and i think it's really noble for them to not try to take any legal issues and to incentivize fans to create their own projects with their own IP in a way that it's respectful and doesn't hurt like the Sonic brand, we can call it that. And I think that if you don't want to buy the collection, because if you know, you know that these four titles can be played in a remaster way on PC, that's okay, it's your choice. But if you want to buy the collection, and if you are thinking about it, I really recommend buying the collection when you can. Maybe on a sale, if it is not of your taste the current price. But I think it's important to say that Sonic Origins is a really good collection. It is something that every single Sonic fan wants. At the same time, it has the respect of Sega, of having some alternative ways, if you can call it that, for those that can't afford it to still try these classic games. And so, my opinion is that um, this collection deserves your time. If you can buy it, buy it. And I hope you have tons of fun with the classic adventures of the Blue Blur. It's just my opinion, of course, everyone is entitled to their opinion. And maybe this video was a bit too long to say, hey, you should buy Sonic Origins in my opinion. But it is what it is. I think it's more important than anything to reflect about what we have in a collection and what we have in a product. In fact, kinda ending this video, I still haven't expressed my full opinion about Sonic Frontiers because I think that um, maybe we aren't seeing everything, am I right? Maybe the game will be good the first the, the impressions of the commercial way of promoting the game with IGN at first for me were awful, but now we are going, we are having some footage that maybe looks good, so why express an opinion about something that I'm really not sure what it is? I think I should get more info on that, and I think you guys should take some time to judge more things instead of ranting and of creating a um, bad idea of something. What I have to say once again is, if you can buy Sonic Origins, consider buying it. Because I, Sonic Station, am sure going to buy it and I'm going to stream it for you guys on Sonic's 31st birthday. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care you all.